A human reading a data set would probably assume that these are the same as France, or they would assume that Mark spelled incorrectly is the same as this one. However, Excel can't do that, and we've all been in situations where we've wanted Excel to do that, but it takes us loads of manual effort to try and clean it. Well, for a long, long time, this was an issue for me until very recently, I stumbled across this hidden feature that allows you to change it. And it's actually not particularly difficult to use, even though it does use Power Query. If you've never used Power Query before, then you will be able to follow these steps. And because it's in Power Query, you can use it in Power BI as well as Excel. My name is David Nyman, and I have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Power BI, Zoom Teams. If you're using tech at the workplace, then I'm covering it on my channel. So subscribe if you want weekly videos on this kind of content. It can even do other more advanced things, like it can match like Germany, Allemagne, Deutschland, etc., England and UK, or Mark and Mark Smith. But you've got to watch out for false similars. So things like Slovakia and Slovenia look very similar. And then these ones as well. So we're going to look at how to deal with all of these things using the Power Query tool. So here we are with the data set we're going to use. It has a lot of the similar stuff that I showed you, but the country ones. And then we're going to change it like this. And it's even going to be able to tell us how similar it is from the original one and the different types of issues that can be done. So misspellings, alternative ways of saying things, um, false similars we're going to look at as well, casing issues, extra spaces, etc. So to do this, we're going to need to launch Power Query, but just follow these steps, even if the thought of that can feel intimidating. So select your data set and then go to the name box and type in a name. So to correct, for example, and then can be anything as long as there's no space in there. Then go to the data tab and choose from table or range. And then it launches the Power Query Editor. If this is intimidating, then don't worry, just follow these steps. Um, you will need to first make sure that your table headers are in here. So it shouldn't say column one, column two, it should say these ones here. By the way, if you want a copy of this file, then leave a comment at the bottom of this video and I'll share it with you. So you use first row as headers, and then it does upload them here. And you have your applied steps here. Uh, here you have the formula bar, and here you have the different queries on the left. Now, if you don't see these two, then go to the view tab and tick them. So click on query settings and tick on formula bar. Then we're going to create a new query. So go to the home tab, new source, other sources, and then blank query. And here we're going to say equals table dot add fuzzy this one. So when you get it, you can double click it just like the regular Excel, press enter. But sometimes this happens accidentally. It says table, table. This is just kind of a bug in the system. So delete one of the tables. So this is how it looks. And then this is what it returns. So it explains to you what the function is. But here you can enter your parameters, which is really, really useful. You can do this with any function on Power Query. For people that don't know it, it's a great way to learn a function without having to go online. So we're going to choose the table. And our table is going to be the one that we said to correct. And then the column name needs to match exactly, including the casing. So if it's a capital letter, it needs to be the same there. And then the new column name is fixed name, for example. And then these are all optional. I'm going to leave them all blank except for the similarity column name. And this is going to be very helpful. And then we'll go through them all one by one. A similarity column name, we're going to say how similar, question mark. And I'm going to click invoke. And look at that. How cool is that? You've got the country and the fixed name. And you can see it's already fixed a bunch of them. By the way, if you are using Power Query for a while, you may be aware of fuzzy matching with table joins. With merge queries, you have fuzzy matching. So this is the similar kind of technology. I have another video on that if you want to learn more about it. It is probably good practice to rename these. So I'm going to click in the name and choose cleaned. So here we've got country issue, fixed name, how similar. France and France, that's 0 0.88 similar. Uh, Slovakia, Slovenia is actually more similar than that is. And you can keep going and see the similarities here. So if there's no space, that's 0 0.95. Germany, 
Now it has got in my fixed name the wrong Germany output, so we're going to need to fix that. And we're going to explore what makes it choose that one instead of the other one. Here it's chosen the right France, but it hasn't chosen the right Germany. In particular, Netherlands it hasn't fixed. The, the ones that are really alternative ways, like UK, England, Gibraltar, we're going to need a transformation table for that. So I'll show you how to do that later in this video. But first, let's look at how to fix Netherlands and things like that. So you can change the similarity threshold. If I go to this, I can relaunch the parameter things that I need to change. Um, it does keep this up here. Unfortunately, it gets rid of everything in the options, so you have to redo that. So in the similarity common name, I need to do how similar again. And then here I'm going to say, well, similarity threshold is going to be 0 0.3, say. So I'm going to make it very, very low. By default, it's 0 0.8, um, which means that all of these will be minimum 0 0.8, but I'm going to change that to 0 0.3. Uh, you can also choose whether to ignore case or ignore spaces. So I'm going to say for both of these ones, I'm going to say false, and we'll see what happens. Press OK. What have we done there? Netherlands has been fixed because that's 0 0.69, and our minimum was 0 0.3. But if I look at Slovenia, it's now not fixed because I said ignore case and ignore space is false, and Slovenia spelled like this is also not changed. So uh, we can edit this, but as we saw, that will leave these blank and we need to redo them again. So the other way we can edit it is by clicking the down arrow here and editing it here. So I'm going to say true, lowercase, copy, paste there. And here I'm going to change that to 0.7. And we're going to watch what happens here. So that's changed. Uh, the casing's changed as well. And Netherlands has not changed. So let's go back to 0.3. Like that and now it's fixed here um, culture this is depending on language so it will use the English language rules if it's left as null otherwise you can change it to anything from Japanese to Khmer Cambodian Thai German etc whatever you want uh, transformation table we'll look at in a bit but uh, for now we're gonna look at well what is it that makes France spelled the right way and Germany not spelled the right way so I cannot edit it here that's the feature of Power Query. It's only to transform, it's not to edit. If I click Close and Load on the Home tab, so now it's loaded this table here, where we have the country issue, fixed name, and how similar. And that's in a new sheet over here. Now this is just something we can cut and paste. So if we just select it like that, we can still cut in here. So paste like that, and then it will just show up there. That's okay. You need to do it with a whole table. Notice it has formatted it as a table. Um, I'm not going to go talk about that too much in this video, but it is a really useful feature, actually. And we can see that France is spelled correctly in the first one. If it was the other way around, so if this was that and this is France, then if I right-click and refresh, it's one of the great things about Power Query, the fixed name will be the wrong one. So I'm going to undo that. So if there's the same number, it will take the top one. But if there's more that are spelled with Germany with a double R, then it will assume that that's the correct one. So even if this is the top one, the correct one, uh, that will do it there. But if I change this to the correct one, then here I can right click and refresh. And then it has fixed them in the right way. Um, notice that we still have this issue of Slovakia. So that is 0.91 similar, but we're not gonna be able to do that if we wanna fix France and other ones. We could otherwise do a threshold of 0.92, for example, and then this will stay as Slovakia. But we're gonna do some manual steps next to fix it. So here I've got a transformation that I made. The key things is there needs to be one column that's from and one column that's to and it is showing you how to go from here to what it needs to be. Now I will say the magic is probably this step here. <laughs> the transformation table, we've always been able to do that in some way or another with Excel. Um, it is quite cool that you can incorporate it into fuzzy matching, but here it is quite nice that you can do this, this, this fuzzy cluster column. That's the magic of how you can do it. And then you can still manually amend it. So for example, I'm gonna show you how to manually say that Slovenia needs to stay Slovenia or Slovakia, Slovakia, um, and then we'll load it here. 
So we did say that you can rename the table. If you don't want to do that, you can go data and from table or range. And then we'll ask you to make a table, press OK. And then it does change the formatting and give you other table features in your source data. So if you don't want that, then you need to rename it first. But we're OK with this. Um, it's called it table nine, but we'll call it transformation. And then here, if I go back to cleaned, this is the one that we've said that we've set up before. So transformation table, I can just change that there. Notice that <laughs> I have misspelled it, but that's okay. But if I press enter there, now it has taken that as I need to. So it knows that England is United Kingdom, UK is United Kingdom, España to Spain, Net Holland's to Netherlands as well. So that's all you need to do. You just need to have one column that's called from, one column that's called to. You can have other columns like this as well. All right, so let's look at how to add a change for Slovenia. So if I go to add column, I can choose conditional column. This is like writing an if formula, but without any code. So I can say if country equals Slovakia, then choose from the country column. Otherwise, we're gonna choose it from the fixed name column. And we're going to say this is clean country. So now we have set it up like that. Now, where this might go wrong is we did load up the table to correct. So if you do not set the data type, then it does not work. So for example, here, if this one wasn't set and the data types are are showing you like this, then it will break. So you, it says we only support text columns for fuzzy join operations, same as fuzzy matching rules. So you need to make sure that in this one, you have set it up to be a text data format. It should do that for you automatically though, so you don't need to do it manually. But if you are getting that error, that's how you fix it. If you see these signs, this will tell you that it's not loaded up properly. This will tell you that it is. This symbol means it's a function, which is the one that we added, for example. Transformation tables, by the way, do make the whole process faster. So if you know in advance that you are going to change it somehow and you want to do it on a very, very large data set, then transformation tables will make it faster. You can still get it to fuzzy match the ones that are left over, but it will look first in the transformation table. All right, so let's look now look at how to add the column ourselves. So here, this is the original one that we had, and what we're gonna do is we're going to add a column. So I'm going to click on FX. I'm going to say equals table.add fuzzy cluster column, like that. Again, if there's table, table, then delete one of the tables. So open your brackets, table is table. So that's going to be change type, which is just gonna be the name of the previous step comma, and by the way, this part is more advanced, so if you are new to Power Query, then <laughs> just do the step that we've done so far. Column name is text, so this is going to be in speech marks country, like that. Then new column name, again, speech marks, so corrected country. Then, then the options, and these are all the options that we saw before. So I'm just gonna do it like this, and then close my brackets. And then I just get corrected country. You can see it's changed the base cases, which is France and France, but it hasn't done the uh, transformation table. It hasn't done anything unusual with the casing and it hasn't changed the similarity threshold. So the Netherlands isn't changed. Now, if we go back to the one that we made, the cleaned one, we can see here is the stuff. So I can just, if I want to copy and paste it, this is how it's going to look. So you can just copy it and then go back here. And then here I can press a comma and then paste that. Notice that you don't need all of them. So if I do leave this out, the culture one, for example, one that I never use because I do my stuff in English, then you can do that and then add the transformation table, uh, change the threshold, true, true, and add the how similar column. I really like the how similar column because you don't get this with the fuzzy matching for merge queries. I do recommend renaming this, so right click and then rename, and we're going to say is add fuzzy call. This has actually been launched in a 
slightly better way on Power Query Online at the time of making this video. Let me show you that. So here I am in Power Query Online, which you can get to by clicking on Get Data. This is very similar, but you do have some differences, like Marcus Key is there, and in Add Column, you have Cluster Values. So this is essentially the same thing, but it gives you a user interface, which is really nice. So Country and then New Name is going to be New Country. And then you have your options here. So ignore case, drag your similarity threshold, default is 0.8, show similarity scores and transformation table if you have one. And then we'll add it over here, which is quite nice. <laughs> or you also have transform group by, and you can choose use fuzzy grouping. So fuzzy grouping is essentially the same as fuzzy matching, but then also does group by. So it does two things in one. Personally, I don't really use it because I'll just fuzzy match and then do the grouping but it does uh, have the option here. You can also write this in Power Query Desktop on your own. Similarity scores don't really apply to grouping because you are usually doing a count or something like that. So I can say, uh, use that, change the threshold. Let's do it like 0.3 again, and then ignore case and ignore text parts, which means ignore spacing. And there we go. And now it's grouped it as well. Notice that I haven't done the transformation. So UK, etc., is not grouped. And Espana is also not grouped, but it's done the other ones quite well. You can also, if you want to, you can copy this and then go back to your Power Query here. And I can say FX. And I can paste that. And I'm going to change the name of the first one, which is table. I'm going to change that there. And notice that you don't need the hash symbols and the speech marks for the table name if you don't have any spaces. So here we have table as table, then key as any, which is the column that you wanna change. And in this case, it's country. And then what you wanna name it and how you want to aggregate it, uh, what type you want it to return. And then here are the options that you can choose. So press enter, and then you can get a count like that as well. So it's also available in Excel and Power BI as this one fuzzy group, but personally, I wouldn't use that. I just do the add fuzzy column and then I'd group by here, or I just launch it to Excel and then do a pivot table. You often want to manually adjust them. So as we saw with Slovakia, as we saw with uh, Germany, you want to do manual adjustments and that's why going straight to the grouping and also going straight to merge queries is something that I don't tend to use often. But using this kind of feature of just adding a column with a house similar, and then the user can manually decide to keep or remove them, I think it's absolutely brilliant. So if you like this video, then my name is David Benheim, and I have lots of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Power BI, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tech of the Workplace and I'm covering it on my channel, I love showing the new stuff, and I love showing Power Query tricks. I'm doing a lot of those recently. Thanks for watching.